and John will be doing your uh, virtual walkthrough here on your Sawyer. Uh, first right here we have your electric tongue jack. Raise it up and down. It'll help uh, level it front to back whenever you get to your site. Uh, 2 and 5 16 ball on the, on the hitch here. Uh, right now this coupler is in the unlock position. In order to lock it onto the truck, just push it down in. Uh, I recommend getting a coupler lock for this. Uh, it's good for storage so that nobody can steal it. Also to uh, keep it secure on the tow vehicle. To release it, you're just going to pull up and pull back. Uh, you got your 7-pin uh, harness here. Uh, this plugs into the tow vehicle. It does your turn signals, your brake lights, your running lights, uh, as well as uh, if you have a brake controller. And if you have a charge wire coming off of the tow vehicle, it's going to charge your uh, onboard battery. You also have your safety chains here. I uh, recommend uh, just crossing them over one time. Uh, you don't want to cross them up too much because they'll get bound up. Uh, you also have a breakaway cable here. Uh, this breakaway cable should be attached separately. I recommend getting a carabiner like this, 20 or 30 pound carabiner, uh, hooking it separately. Uh, this is for if the trailer ever comes disconnected. This cable is going to pull out of a little solenoid box and engage the trailer brakes uh, to help stop it from running away. Uh, moving on to the propane tanks. You can access these propane tanks from the top here just by loosening up these two thumb screws and flipping this lid open. And you can get right to the top of the tanks. Uh, I'm going to pull this cover off so you guys can see the uh, regulator right here. Now this regulator um, it's a two position, uh, three position regulator, so you can do um, the left tank or the right tank, or if you put it in the middle here and you have both tanks on, it's gonna pull off of one tank, and when the pressure drops, it's gonna automatically switch over to the other tank. Um, you wanna make sure that when you turn these on, they're all the way on and all the way off, and when you're storing it, you keep them off. Um, you can travel with them on going down the road so that it keeps your fridge on, okay? Uh, back here is your uh, onboard battery. Uh, it's a 12 volt deep cycle battery, group 24 battery. Uh, you also have a light right here. Uh, the switch is on the bottom side, um, so you can see what's going on out here tonight. Uh, moving around uh, to this side here, uh, you can see that you have your stabilizer jacks. There's one on each corner. Now these are solely for keeping the trailer from rocking around when you're in it and camping. Um, so you want to put those down. It does come with a crank. You can also buy an adapter. Uh, you can also use a three quarter inch socket on a drill and run those up and down. Um, lubing those, you only want to use like a dry lube um, and just get the bearings, um, just so that it doesn't collect any road grime or anything like that. Uh, opening up the compartments here for the beds, just flip this up, pop it down, move it over, and then just pull these down. Okay, uh, and then you go inside and put up the, uh, the bar to support the fabric and then you'll pull the fabric around the corner um, keep it keep it secure. Uh, and I'll show you that once we get inside. But moving around to the side here you do have pass-through compartment. Uh, the baggage latch has a magnet that holds the doors open. Uh, right here is your fresh water connection for uh, filling your fresh water tank. Uh, you're just going to take a garden hose, stick it down in there, fill it up and water starts coming out, it's full. All right, um, it is um, recommended to, to get close to your destination as possible if you do need on-demand water, okay? Uh, you don't want to be traveling with that extra weight. Uh, but if you're just camping at a campground and you have uh, water hookups, this is where you're gonna put your hose right to this connection here like it's shown, okay? Uh, outside shower, you do have um, underneath here that, that white drain is your fresh water tank drain. So you're just gonna open that up and the tank will drain out when you're done so you don't have stagnant water uh, creating mold and building. This is your furnace input and exhaust. Uh, it's about 160, 180 degrees when your furnace is running. So anything that's out here leaning up against this could potentially catch on fire. Um, so just be aware of that. Uh, backside of the fridge here, uh, you shouldn't really have to access this. Um, it's more for uh, servicing. Uh, but this just pops open and it gives you access for us to, uh, to work on the back. Now this hose here is a drain hose for condensation when the fridge gets turned off um, and it starts uh, condensating and draining out. So don't be, don't be scared if you got water coming out of here uh, when it's stored. Okay. Moving back here, you have your black tank drain and your gray tank drain. 
I recommend keeping these closed while you're camping and there's a monitor panel inside and I'll show you that. Um, either when the tanks get full or you're done for the, for the weekend camping, you wanna come out here, hook up your sewer hose to your, to your drain and then pull the black valve, let that drain and you have what's called a black tank flush. Um, this is gonna help get rid of um, any solids that are still left in the tank. Um, so you wanna make sure that that valve is open while you're using this. Uh, you will have an issue with it backing up if you leave that closed and forget about it. So always have the black valve open when you're using the black tank flush. Uh, once you're done flushing it out and that's drained, then you can close this valve, come over and open up that gray tank. That gray tank's gonna be your sink water and your shower, so it's got that soapy water in there. It's gonna help rinse that sewer hose out. All right, then once you're done, you just close it off, put the cap on. Uh, you do have another light out here. Uh, for seeing at night when you're trying to hook up or trying to, uh, if you need to dump out at night. Uh, you got uh, cable and satellite hookups right here. Uh, cables on the left and the satellite, if you had a portable satellite dish, you can hook it up on the right. Uh, you have a uh, 30 amp service here. This is about a 25, 30 foot uh, cord. Like I said, it's 30 amp. Uh, you're just gonna, it's got a locking collar here. Twist and pull it out. Uh, it's got this little J-hook here. It can only go in one way, so it's going to line up to that J-hook on the bottom there. Put it in, quick little turn, and then lock that collar on. Okay. The uh, bumper end caps pop off. Uh, they're, they're used for uh, storing your sewer hose. Okay. Most sewer hoses will fit in there. Some of the more heavier duty ones, the bigger ends won't fit, but uh, for the most part, uh, they all fit in there. And then uh, on the back side, this one's already open. This bed um, you have your spare tire that's uh, connected on the bumper there. Right. Moving around to this side, as you can see the awning's open right now. Uh, you're going to want to make sure that if it's uh, heavy winds or heavy rain, bring this thing in. Um, I've seen them rip right off the sidewall, so you don't want to have that happen. Uh, just being safe and keep it in. Uh, if you're leaving the camper for the day at the campground, Put the awning in so that way you know it's safe and secure. If it's lightly raining out and you can monitor it, that's okay. Uh, one of two things is going to happen. Uh, whichever side is filling up with water, say your, your nose up so the back's going to fill up with water, this thing's going to get some pressure on it and then automatically dump down. Uh, it's going to collapse these arms with, with too much water on there, okay? And then moving over to here, you have your your other side of your pass-through storage, same thing, it's got that magnet hole. Um, it does come uh, solar ready for, for trickle charging the battery. Um, and you can get an adapter to plug into there to a uh, portable uh, uh, solar panel. Uh, this is that crank I was telling you about for the stabilizer jacks, it just goes on there. Counterclockwise brings it up, clockwise brings them down. Okay. You got your uh, water heater here, it is dual element, so you have electric and gas. Uh, you can run both at the same time. Uh, the electric switch is out here right next to this electric heating element. Uh, you just want to make sure that you always have water in here uh, when that electric heating element's on and you plug it into shore power because uh, you'll end up burning that heating element out. Uh, this drain plug is also an anode rod and that anode rod serves the purpose of um, the water eating away at that anode rod instead of eating away at the inside of the tank. So periodically you want to pull that plug out and check it. You also want to pull this if you're going to be storing it for an extended period of time. Uh, you'll start getting stagnant water, it's, it'll start smelling like rotten eggs. So uh, you want to make sure that if you're storing it for an extended period of time, pull that plug, let that water drain out, uh, and then put that plug back in. And at the same time, you can inspect that anode rod. Uh, you do have a port out here right next to the water heater. Uh, it's a cable port if you had a TV out here and you have a, your uh, outside GFI. You do have outside speakers for the radio, and you have a uh, hood vent for the uh, over, over the stove cooktop. You have an outside light here as well, and that on-off switch is right on the bottom here. Okay. Uh, these steps just fold up and then push up and in. And then to pull them out, just pull them out and then flip that over. Uh, next video, we're going to be moving on into the inside.